In this Salt and Sacrifice Guide, Top 10 Tips for Beginners, we're going to go through the best beginner tips and tricks that you should know in order to complete your playthrough with maximum efficiency. I'll be talking about resource management, crafting, and explain how you unlock and use runic arts. Salt and Sacrifice is a 2D Souls-like developed and published by Ska Studios. You play as a marked inquisitor trying to redeem your crimes by purging evil mages from the kingdom. The game is available on PC and PlayStation 5. A big shout out to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. If you're picking up the game in the Epic Games Store, be sure to use our link to help support the channel and use our creator code FEXTRALIFE. Like any other Souls game, Salt and Sacrifice has a huge emphasis on combat. Using the correct equipment and managing your resources is key in order to keep up with exploration, so we're going to start by pointing out how to craft and improve your Hunter tools. Hunter tools are special, consumable items that you can craft while exploring the map. These include Hearth and Flask, Healing Potions, Haze Decoction, Mana Potions, ammunitions, and a variety of offensive potions that you can throw at enemies to inflict elemental damage. Hunter tools can be unlocked by bringing new materials that you find to Trista. You can find her standing next to the Hunter tool upgrade table east of town. The upgrade table allows you to increase the maximum amount of Hunter tools that you can carry at a time, but it won't increase their efficiency. In order to craft these, you'll need to collect their respective materials, which can be acquired from different sources. The hearth and flask, for example, requires one valley herb that can be collected from red bushes, while ammunition requires Irona Aura, which can be collected from stone piles or crystals. I highly recommend that you collect everything you find on your journeys, even if you're not currently using that particular item. The amount of hunter tools that you use will increase as you progress further into the game, and you'll find yourself short on these if you do not. Potions are a key aspect of the game, and you might find yourself running out of them when constantly dying to a boss. In this case, you can farm basic materials by defeating haze-burnt enemies and collecting their ashes. Note that these only spawn during mage hunts. Another alternative is buying materials from merchants in town. Each time you level up, you'll be awarded one Black Star Stone, and every five levels, you'll acquire one Gray Star Stone. Black Star Stones can be used to unlock nodes on your skill tree, while Gray Star Stones allow you to recover Black Star Stones by unlearning a node. You are not forced to spend your Star Stones when leveling up, so feel free to save them for later if you're not sure what type of equipment you want to use next. Some nodes can also require two or three Star Stones to be unlocked, so make sure to plan accordingly. While the skill tree can be overwhelming at first glance, it's actually very simple to understand. There are two types of main nodes, stat nodes and class nodes. Stat nodes. These are the smaller ones and they simply provide plus one to a certain stat. For example, fortified strength increases your strength by one. Once unlocked, you can keep boosting the same stat up to five times on the same node by spending additional black star stones. Class slots. These nodes are bigger and can only be unlocked one time. They provide both stats and the ability to use a certain type of weapon, armor, or runic art. For example, the Class 3 Vanguard requires two Black Star Stones. Once unlocked, it will provide plus two strength and allow you to equip Class 3 Vanguard weapons without penalties. Weapons and armor don't have requirements other than unlocking their respective skill tree nodes. You can use any weapon or armor even without unlocking its node, but you'll suffer from several stat penalties if you do. Runic Arts are one of the most important features of the game, and depending on your starting class, they might pass unnoticed at first. As an Inquisitor, you won't be able to use magic, but you can acquire skills from weapons. When hovering over a weapon, you can browse over the different tabs to check what Runic Art it provides. These skills are fixed for each weapon and cannot be swapped. In order to use a Runic Art, you'll first need to unlock its corresponding skill tree node. There are two Runic Art branches, one for Divine Glyphs and one for Forbidden Glyphs. Both of them can be found on the lower middle part of the skill tree. While hovering over a runic art, you'll be able to check the type of glyphs it possesses and its class. If you don't meet the requirements, you won't be able to use that runic art, but it won't affect the stats of the weapon in any other way. I highly recommend that you unlock both branches to their max level so you can try all the different runic arts and discover which ones fit best with your playstyle. In many cases, these are more important than the stats of the weapon itself. Each mage you fight provides the materials to craft a different type of set. When defeating mages and their respective minions, you notice that they drop crafting materials. As soon as you pick up one of these materials, you'll be able to see the complete crafting list related to that boss by visiting the crafting table located west of town. This list is always comprised by a full set of armor that can be either light or heavy, one amulet, one ring, one dagger, and a variety of weapons. Mage fights become increasingly harder and your equipment can become obsolete very quickly. When fighting new mages, always travel back to town and check if the new set has something you can use to improve your arsenal. Minions also drop materials, so you can restart the mission and farm the minions if you want to craft something before facing the mage itself. Enemies and mages will often drop upgrade materials, which are called Ash Pyres. There are five different Ash Pyre elements, and they are all comprised of levels 1 to 5. You can spend Ash Pyres to upgrade your weapons and armor on the Enhanced Table located right on the east part of town. 
Both weapons and armor share the same types of ash pyres, and each piece of equipment requires a different combination of elements and levels. These stones can only be acquired as loot and are hard to come by, so make sure to only upgrade equipment that you know you'll be using in the long run. I also highly recommend that you focus on upgrading your weapon first, as this will greatly increase your combat capabilities. When it comes to armor, focus on increasing your chest and pants first, as these parts provide a lot more defensive values than helms or gloves, so you're actually getting more stats for your investment. I highly recommend that you try out different weapons and constantly tinker your builds with new amulets, rings, daggers, and artifacts. It's easy to get tunnel vision with your current build setup, but trying out different things as you get more experience might provide you with different options. For example, you might use a ring that provides you with more health at first, but then change it for a different perk once you feel more confident with your HP or resistances. It's also worth mentioning that you can have two different weapons equipped at the same time and that you can quickly switch between them during combat. For this reason, it's best to invest into two different weapon branches that might complement each other to have more options during boss fights. A good example would be to invest in twin daggers for quick and close attacks, and to also invest in glaives for better range and more damage per hit. You'll gather both salt and silver while you're out exploring the map, but you won't be able to spend it until you return to town. Like any other Souls game, you'll drop currencies when you're killed in combat, and need to run back to your corpse to retrieve it. With exploration being the focus of the game, you'll often play for a long period of time without even thinking about returning to town. At some point, you'll face a boss or enemy that you can't defeat, and by dying two consecutive times, you'll lose all of your currency. For this reason, it's important to know when to return home to level up your character and spend your silver. For me, the best time is just after defeating a mage and just before facing one. Mages drop a tremendous amount of salt, so it's important to return to town to spend it without risking losing it. Also, when facing a new mage, you'll most probably have been exploring for a while and possess a bunch of salt, so returning before fighting an unknown enemy is a good call, and will also give you time to prepare for the fight. Spending your silver can be a tricky thing since there isn't much that is worth getting in town. I personally recommend that you buy as many hunter tool materials as you can. Another good alternative is to buy bags of silver or salt splinters. These items can be consumed to acquire currency but do not drop when you die, so it's a good option if you want to gather resources to spend later on. While exploring the different locations, you'll be often limited to what you can or can't reach based on the Inquisitor tools that you have available. Inquisitor tools are key items that allow you to interact with the environment to reach new levels or areas. The grappling hook, for example, allows you to hook onto anchors to swing into upper platforms. Because most of these are unlocked during end game, it's important to revisit starter locations to reach areas that you previously couldn't. This will allow you to find many useful items as well as some hidden missions and NPCs. Boss fights are the most challenging aspect of Salt and Sacrifice, and you might get frustrated when being defeated over and over by the same boss, so here are some tips that might help you overcome a difficult fight. Build Rage If you're using Rage Runic Arts, make sure to build up Rage before jumping into the fight. This will allow you to spam your skills as soon as the fight starts, giving you a tremendous edge over the enemy. Use Other Enemies Mages are hostile to all creatures except their own minions. This includes Hades Burnt Enemies, Regular Enemies, and even Other Mages. If regular enemies spawn near your boss fight, you can lure them in and use them as a distraction or even to deal damage to the mage. Staggering Bosses While throwing potions don't deal that much damage to bosses, they are still very effective at staggering them. Throw potions into the mage until you see its head start flashing white. Once this happens, jump into the air and press the grappling hook button to perform a critical strike. Block and Roll All bosses have a wide array of attacks and they often spam them constantly, leaving very little window to strike back. If you're a veteran Souls player, you'll most likely try to roll away from every situation, but in some cases, blocking is a better alternative. Large AoE attacks, for example, will require you to roll very far away, and once you recover, you'll most likely won't be able to strike back. Blocking the attack and taking a little damage in these cases will often be much more viable, as it'll keep you closer to your enemy. Guiltless Shards These consumable items allow you to remove spell mark effect from your body, allowing you to access your maximum HP. It's highly advisable to save the shards for boss encounters, as having more HP will greatly increase your survival chances. Each main location has a hidden tome that you can deliver to Rune Reader Diadella next to the portal in town to unlock faded hunts. These missions act as daily quests that you can complete to farm salt, silver, crafting materials, and upgrade materials. Completing these daily quests is highly advisable as they not only allow you to improve your character, but will often allow you to notice areas that you previously missed as you were hunting for the boss. That wraps up our Getting Started Guide for Salt and Sacrifice. If you have any other questions about the game, please feel free to leave them in the comments or drop by our stream on Twitch and ask.